Hello and welcome to Designer Discussions with Jason, Miriam, and Maria. For all of our listeners that will be at KBiz in two weeks, we have an interesting episode for you. Today, we're going to be talking about how to start conversations with brands during your time at KBiz. Welcome to Designer Discussions Podcast with Miriam, Maria, and Jason. Tune in each week where we discuss marketing, PR, and business advice for design professionals. Are you an interior designer facing the challenges of marketing your business? Are you struggling to find the time and looking for effective solutions? You're not alone. Many interior designers and robotics share these same things, but there is a solution. Welcome to the Designer Discussions Academy, where we understand your challenges and are here to help. Our academy offers a monthly focus on marketing, PR, and business development tailored for interior designers and remodelers. Learn the most important marketing tactics from SEO to get press, social media, and even harnessing the power of AI. Join us at the Designer Discussions Academy and take the first step towards transforming your interior design business. I'm super excited to talk about this topic because I once participated in a trade show and I learned that at the trade shows, it's the best opportunity to start networking and developing relationships with brands. And since I don't understand how this whole process works, I wanted to tap into Miriam's knowledge and learn more as an interior designer about collaborations with brands, what they look like, how they start, how do, you know, how do we address it? So if 2024, you put on your vision boards or on your goals that you want to start having a business relationship with some of your favorite brands, we're going to talk about how to get that started for you today. Okay. Um, so I, I would say that generally speaking, it's always a good time to start talking to brands and it's not as complicated as people may think. We have talked about this. Um, on the podcast in the past, but a trade show definitely is a perfect opportunity to to get the discussion going because most likely the right people are going to be in the booth, right? So, and I from I so I've exhibited with brands at KBIS for the last twenty years, so I have a pretty good idea how that works on on the brand side, and I will say that I can barely remember an occasion when I was approached by a designer who would have wanted to collaborate with us, even at Kohler, you know, and there's a lot of people in the booth, but typically um, the PR, if there is a PR person in the booth, that would be a good person to start with, because if they're not the person who actually manages um, the brand relationships, they are exactly going to know who it is, but that's like step you know, that's one step further. So how how should you go about this? Um, I think you need to think about, like Maria said, it's like, is this a goal that you have, right? And if it is a goal that you have, then think about the brands that that you're passionate about that you might want to represent. Then you go figure out if they're exhibiting at the show and where they are, and you come up with a plan to visit those booths and go talk to somebody. And how do you do that? I'm like, you just basically walk in and you start talking to the first person that has a name tag that has the brand sign on it. And you explain who you are. You say, okay, you know, I'm a designer. I'm, I love your brand, you know. Um, what, what kinds of, what kinds of designer collaborations do you have as a brand? So I wouldn't go in and say, oh, I'd like to be a brand partner for you, or I'd like to get a licensing deal, or don't pitch and hold yourself into what it might be, because every brand is going to have different opportunities. You know, some of the bigger brands probably have structured programs that you can plug into as a designer. Some of the smaller brands may have, they just sort of do it on the fly, you know? So it, it I would encourage you to look at this just as making the connection, you know, building the relationship. It's a networking opportunity. So Miriam, can you roll back just a second? What is a licensing agreement? And then what is a brand 
partnership. Can you give me an idea of what those two separate things are just so I don't mm-hmm. use the wrong verbiage in those yeah. situations? And I'd say they're really all brand partnerships, but licensing deals is typically when you design physical product for a brand that then is marketed um, in conjunction with your brand and and um, and the, the brand's name. So if you think about well, a lot of companies do that, you know, like in my old life, Callista does a lot of design designer collaborations is what what I would call it. Um, and I think that's that's very ambitious. I would definitely not start out with that. Um, I would just go in and say, you know, what, how, how do you, and you can just say, you can make it open-ended and you can say, how do you work with brands? Yeah. How do you work with designers? You know, what, what opportunities um, does your brand offer to designers who are passionate um, about your brand? And if you have examples of, I wouldn't necessarily pull up the phone and say, oh, here's where I, you know, put, where I tagged you on social media. But if, if you have, if you, there is a project where you used the product, I think that'd be good to mention, you know, say, I, I just worked on this fabulous project in X, Y, and C, and I was using, and then use the product name that will impress all of the the people who work for the brand, because it shows that you already have familiarity and it's going to make you a very attractive brand partner and, and a brand partnership to answer the other part of your question. To me, that's any kind of collaboration you have. So it could be like, if you are an official influencer, and you have a partnership with a brand, that's a brand partnership. That means there's an exchange of money, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. It could just be something where you, where you collaborate with the brand, and they give you discounted or free of charge product, um, probably in exchange for whatever, um, something, right? It, it, um, there's no, there's no set rules about how that works, but to me in the, a brand partnership is anything that's a mutually beneficial, um, business relationship between a brand and a designer. Is there anything that we should consider taking with us to sort of leave with someone or how is the follow-up? How is, how does this look? This networking opportunity appears to be like a quick, fast introduction, but Mm -hmm. how do we make sure we like solidify and follow up with something like this? So I would, because when you first enter somebody's booth, you may not end up, you're likely not going to end up with the right person for you to talk to. So I would ask who is the person within your company who handles designer brand partnerships, designer collaborations, whatever you want to call them. And you want, if the person is there, which likely they will be, um, then talk to that person directly. And if the person is not there, I would try to get that person's name and um, reach out to them directly because you can't really rely on I do, a lot of people take notes at trade shows and they say, oh, yeah, we'll get back to you X, Y, and Z. But that if that's actually going to happen or not, I would not put my faith in it. So I would want to walk away from that interaction with the name of the right person for me to talk to either right then and there or to reach out to when I get back to the office. But I wouldn't. And don't just leave your business card. You know, that's you want to be in control of how to move this re- relationship forward intentionally. You can't, um, they may or may not get back to you, but if you're really serious about it, I would want to be able to next to take the next step and, and, and get to the right person. Should we bring something? Um, we, we discussed this as a group uh, before this phone call. The internet is not a reliable tool mm-hmm. when we are in the trade show. Is there anything that wouldn't feel like cluttery or um, overstepping that we could take with us that's more low tech, uh, just in case of the internet issues that we incur inside of these trade shows? I would not because nobody has that much time. You know, and nobody wants to talk to you for 30 minutes um, because there's a lot of people at the trade show. So I would say if anything, have if you have recent work that you did that 
includes products from the specific brand you're going to talk to, save that those pictures on your camera roll. And then, or maybe if you did post on social media, take a screenshot of that. If you got good engagement on it, even better. And maybe that's something you should say, oh, you know, here's an example of where I used your products recently, you know, and people just loved it. I'd, I'd, I'd be really interested in doing more work with you. You know, that's how I would go about it. Well, that sounds a lot easier than having to wrangle up a media kit before you go. But I love that idea of the I, uh, the social proof, like bringing a screenshot of a social media post that has their product in it, that the professional photography is really good, and that you can prove how many people either liked that image or um, made comments and, and, and felt like they wanted to ask a question about the products that were used. And I think that would be great, but to me, that's not even necessary. You know, that's almost, that's bordering, to, that's like a, that's not a soft sell anymore. It's like, okay, here's what I can do for you. And and and, and it, it just gets really transactional right away. And I, I wouldn't want to start out like that. I would highly recommend that you start building the relationship with the right people before you start talking nitty gritty of what a collaboration would look like. Um, especially if you're in it, if you really have an interest in working with a brand um, in the long term. You had mentioned maybe picking a few that you really love mm -hmm. and you want to kind of reach out about um, in this. Is there any prep that someone could do beforehand that might help? Um, well, I would say that the, and hopefully if you're serious and authentic about which brands you choose, you already have a pretty good familiarity with the brand and the products. And if you, if you stock, if you talk with the, the brand representative and they can tell that you, you understand their brand, you know, you are familiar with their product lines that's going to make you hugely credible. You know, you don't want to go in and 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 pretend that you know what you don't know. I mean, you really, but if you can authentically be there and say, you know what, I love your brand. You know, I have used this and that this is one of my favorite products. You know, I've used it in so many projects. I'm like, just tell them what what you have done and why you like their brand all and giving them an understanding that you really do understand what their brand is all about. And that's going to want to make them choose you as one of their partners. Are there a lot of people who know to do this at the trade shows? You mean on the brand side or designers? Or, no, I'm like, I, I would, in all the years that I have been going to KBIS and other trade shows, um, uh, usually people want to sell you something, you know, when they approach you, usually they want to sell you some, or they want something from you, right? So I, that's why I am a huge, huge proponent of just go, just go, basically you just go say hello. You tell them who you are and why you like them and you ask for a contact and then that's the next step it's this whole the whole process is not gonna go from from beginning to end while you're and you may only have I don't know five minutes to talk to somebody maybe you're not gonna find um the person that you're looking for so you you you, you have to be a little bit insistent but but if not, that's fine too. You know, that's why I say just have a list of brands, you know, and maybe some of them don't have any current opportunities, even though I'd be shocked. If you tell them you love their product, you 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 use it in your projects, um, they're going to want to know more about it, uh, even if it's just to get their hands on the, the content um, that you produce from those projects. This is exciting. It's like tapping into a whole secret world we didn't even know existed. Yeah, and it's really easy, you know, and that's what I always talk about when I talk about brand partnerships. It's not, you don't have to have a ready pitch necessarily. Um, if you're a full-blown influencer, yes, you know, then they're going to say, well, what's your rate card? You know, it's like blah, 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 blah. But these are not the collaborations 
we're talking about here. These are these are we're talking about designers who are in the business of designing not necessarily in the business of creating content and how you can leverage your design work in in partnership with the brands that you're already liking and using. Would you say this is something that people miss out on if they don't try it? Oh, 100%. Because if you think about it, it's like, what do you have to lose? You know, it's it's always good to to network and i would i would also say and don't necessarily say stay away from the sales reps but sales reps are not in the business of brand partnerships sales reps are in the business of selling products okay and typically if it's a company of any significant size or status they're going to have somebody else who manages um, relationships, brand partnerships or designer collaborations. And it's going to be somebody on the marketing or PR side. So don't get stuck with a sales rep because they're going to want to work with you because they're going to want to sell you a product and they might offer you some kind of discount, but they are probably not plugged into um, the marketing and and content creation process of the brand. So they're not the right they're not the right contact for you. So just be a little bit cautious about that. Love it. Let's get out there and try something new this year at KBiz and let's start those brand partnerships that are all on our goal list. Yeah. Get those conversations started because you never know where it's gonna where it's gonna end up. Good luck. This was a great discussion to prepare all of us for KBiz, which is happening in two weeks. We hope to see all of you at the event. If you are going to be at the event, I will be one of the voices for the industry. I will speak on Tuesday, February 27th from 2.45 to 4.45. Uh, it's talking about how to develop a marketing plan. It's going to be in room N260. We're going to also have a booth at the event in the West Hall, booth number 1168. So we hope to see all of you at the event. If not, we'll hear from you all in about two weeks on Designer Discussions. Are you an interior designer facing the challenges of marketing your business? Are you struggling to find the time and looking for effective solutions? You're not alone. Many interior designers and robotics share these same things, but there is a solution. Welcome to the Designer Discussions Academy, where we understand your challenges and are here to help. Our academy offers a monthly focus on marketing, PR, and business development, tailored for interior designers and remodelers. Learn the most important marketing tactics from SEO to get press, social media, and even harnessing the power of AI. Join us at the Designer Discussions Academy and take the first step towards transforming your interior design business. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Designer Discussions and all of the helpful information. Subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, and share it with your friends. We look forward to having you back next week. For more information on the podcast and the marketing studio, visit designerdiscussions.com and follow us on social media.